which is a word text. And that word text is not just a listing of the items on the diagram. It is actually a glossary. It is definitions. Okay? So you have an item that's identified on your, on your drawing. You have a, an input, whatever it is, input. It's not just a listing of it. It is this input means this in this drawing. This output means this in this drawing. It's, it's a very descriptive set of terminology. That's one thing. Then there is the concept um, drawing. And that is the initial big square with the, the main high level and the inputs, the icons. Okay? From that, then, there is there are the more detailed drawings, what are known as the parent-child drawings. And that is, looks like this, but those are the ones that look like the waterfall, where you come from here to here to here. Those are the ones that look like the waterfall. To have an, uh, an IDEF zero drawing, you have to have all three components. So when we're said, when the instructions said decompose at least one of these into multiple levels, the discussion is, okay, this becomes my parent. I gotta have another one of the level of these. So it's actually a four level drawing, at least. No, the concept, point two, that is not in, in our one and a problem that we're going to have to do. That is not considered the grandparent or the parent. It, that's just the top end concept. That and is then you have the three levels coming down. Yeah. Then you have at least two levels coming down below that. Okay, so you got the glossary, you got the concept, and you got the parent child set up. Now, is the concept like from the beginning there all the way to the end? Down wherever, all okay. wrapped up the, con in the concept is everything. <coughs> right. So that it's is the whole everything. Yeah. 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 All, of, all of what's in here is encompassed in this one box in the concept. Okay. From that, that was one thing. So the, the drawing set is important. Make, part of what we're trying to do here, too, is we're trying to look at different ways of doing the job. So IDEF Zero was this focus. I was expecting to see IDEF zero drawings. Next time we're going to be doing UML, and then we're going to be doing um, BPML. Okay, so I'm uh, look, working through different types of modeling, expecting to see different results, giving you some exposure to how they work, how they don't work, where they're good, where they're not. Okay, some other things then on the on the IDEF zero is the numbering. The concept drawing is always A minus zero. A zero is your first level of parent. From that, then, there's a one. So then this becomes a zero because A minus zero. To reference down to the next parent, you need the, the D DRE down here that says, okay, I'm going from here to diagram A0. Diagram A0 then becomes your, your first level of, of parent child. So then this becomes A0. It has a one, two, three. Now if I'm going to decompose two into my child, then I have to define this. I'm coming to A1. Okay? This then becomes drawing A1, 2. So the first set of drawing there combined is called the A0 drawing. That's right. Okay? The other thing I wanted to make sure I covered is something I thought we'd covered in class, but apparently I, I wasn't as clear as I thought I was on it. And that is 
carrying the ICOMs from diagram to diagram. First off, when you have, and I'm going to draw one box, okay, and it's not the concept draw box. This is a, a, a parent-child box. Quick okay. question. On the yeah. middle one where you said A1-2? A1-2. A no, no dash. Oh, okay. No dash. A1-2. So the A1, even though you're in the A0 drawing, it's called A1 here? Mm -hmm. this, this first pair? Yeah, yeah, which okay. I, I, okay. I realize that's confusing, but yes, that's correct. Just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so let's, let's call this our A0 drawing current drawing. Okay. And we have a series of inputs and outputs, constraints, mechanisms, and calls. Each input needs its own arrow. Each constraint needs its own arrow. Each output needs its own arrow. Okay? You can't combine them. You can't, this isn't uh, um, people and things. Okay, it's one or the other. All right. Every one of these has to appear on this diagram's parent. So in this case, it has to be the same as the ones on the, on the concept drawing. The difference is Okay, you're going to reference this back, and on the concept drawing, you had, say, three of them, and you're using this one and this one. This becomes number two, and this becomes number three. You're referring back to the previous drawing. Okay, these numbers are important. The names are also important. Okay. You gotta have both. But this is the way you refer them back from drawing to drawing. If you have outputs that are not the same, okay, it may be such a thing that they are internal outputs. They're going to another step within the same drawing. That's okay. All right? But ultimately, when you put a big box around the outside of this, it has to look just like this one. Each of these, internal or external, needs its own name. Okay? You can't reuse the names. They all have to have an individual, very specific name. <coughs> and when you... You can have internal ones that come back and go and go back and come in. But again, when you look at the big box around this whole thing, it has to look just like this. That's kind of the way you, you think about it, and that's the way you balance it and make sure that you've got everything covered. So you can't have one of these outputs as an internal output here. Okay? got to come outside the system. Um, if you have an input, or, or let's use a mechanism just because we're down here, that is used in more than one step. Remember we talked about the dividing? You actually do it this way, so this one becomes mechanism one, um, student, but it goes to both places. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come into the drawing twice. Again, think about your, your boundary. It comes in once and then splits. It gets used more than once. Um, the other one is, is purely, um, um, purely trying to think of. Formatting. Um, I mentioned in here, you know, if you're going to use something other than Word, PowerPoint, or, or uh, Visio to put it in, in uh, PDF form just so I can read it, you don't have to do that if, you're not, if you are using one of those. Okay. 
that's are there any more questions on negative negative zero? Because I'm not going to cover anything more on that in here. But, the, but the, you know, make sure that you've got all of the points, especially in IDEF zero, it is very regimented. And if it's not done right, it isn't right. Some of the other ones are a little more forgiving. Okay. Overall, they weren't bad. They were a pretty good first try at it. It does take a little bit of uh, um, getting your head around it <laughs> to do these. Yeah, this is completely new. Yeah. To the way I think, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, tonight we're going to cover three subjects, and, and we're going to cover them relatively fast. Okay. We're going to get into um, UML which is another modeling language, and then uh, BPMN, which is another one. So we will have covered three languages with one variant of a language. We covered the UML um, um, architect, business architect variant yesterday, uh, last week. And then we're going to spend just a, a couple minutes talking about business requirements documents. Use cases. A use case diagram it, it, we've talked about it. It identifies and, and defines how a user interacts with a system. And, and they're very intuitive. You can show them to just about anybody and they can understand what it is that you're trying to do. That does not make them simple to draw or to, under, or to, to create. Okay? Um, I did want to put in here this is kind of an overall, and we've talked a lot about the different diagrams in UML. I, I ran into this, and it happened to be out of a, one of my, my master's in IT books, so I pulled it out. It's a pretty good overview of how the different UML drawings play together. You start with the use case, which basically says, here's what the system does, here's how it interacts with its, its customers. From there, you can go to an activity diagram, which most of us are, are pretty familiar with in terms of it looks like a flow chart. You can go to a class diagram, which speaks to the programmers because that tells them what the tables look like and, and how to set up the, the structure of the, the system. And you can go to a sequence diagram, which talks about the messaging and how the information flows from one place to another. As an alternative to a sequence diagram, if you're not talking to the, to the IT folks, you can go to a, a collaboration diagram, which talks about how the different entities interact. Um, so, so from a UML standpoint, to do a UML setup, you would do all of these things. We're not going to do all of these things. It's not necessary in this class. So most of UML is set up for the programming world. Okay. But the business facing side of it are the use case diagrams and the use case scenarios. They are the description in words and pictures of how that system is going to work in the environment, how people are going to interface with it, what their needs are relative to the way it works. So to, to go through a UML process, you would define the use case and scenarios. You develop the activity diagrams, and then you do the class diagrams, which set up the structure, and then diagram it in, in detail. Part of the reason it's set up this way is because